Hi there, and welcome to this short webinar on the Kid Actions Educational Materials. My name is Gareth Court. I am an online safety consultant who is part of the Digital Citizenship Team at European Schoolnet, one of the project partners for the Kid Actions project. So the short webinar is going to cover the educational materials available on the Kid Actions website, how you can find them, how you can use them, and other supporting guidance that will help you with working with children and young people to explore the nature of cyberbullying. So what is Kid Actions? Well, Kid Actions actually stands for Kick Off Preventing and Responding to Children and Adolescent Cyberbullying Through Innovative Monitoring and Educational Technologies. And the two ways that you can do that, the tools that you can use to work with children and young people are part of the digital education platform for digital educational tools that you can use to help uh, kickstart discussions around cyberbullying, but also help young people understand the nature of cyberbullying. And then alongside that, a number of activities in an educational toolkit that you can also use to help explore this both in and outside of the classroom in formal and non-formal settings. All the materials that I'm going to be showing you today can be found on the Kid Actions website and the tool educational toolkit itself can be found at kidactions.eu forward slash edu toolkit. So before diving into the educational toolkit activities, it's important to understand the digital education tools that are being developed in the Kid Actions project and how they can link in to the educational activities you may run with children and young people. The first of these tools is CAMOT, the Kid Actions monitoring tool. This is a tool aimed at educators to use uh, to generate data to then use for discussions with young people. So this is not a tool that is designed for young people to use directly. And it uses the Twitter API. So basically you can use the tool to analyze information and tweets from Twitter. That is because Twitter is, is pretty much the only public facing open API social media platform. All the others are, are kind of locked away uh, behind privacy settings and obviously data protection laws. But Twitter being a more public facing one, it makes it ideal for being able to analyze this type of content. So you can use the tool to put in various hashtags or keywords and actually search for those. And it draws through data of uh, tweets and other information on the platform containing those hashtags and then runs it through a number of linguistic analysis tools where it analyzes the uh, emotional lexicon. So trying to understand the emotions behind the words, but also map, uh, running it through some tools that actually analyze uh, more visual based elements such as emojis and what the intention might be on those. And the idea is that you can create this uh, uh, network of data that you can then use and put in front of children and young people to explore the type of language that's used in cyberbullying, the type of hashtags clearly that are used on Twitter to spread these kind of things. And, uh, and you can start a discussion with them about their own experiences around bullying and whether or not where the way that happens online is um, in line with the things that you found on Twitter or whether their experiences, particularly on other forms of social media, may be very, very different. So it's a great place to start a discussion, even if the young people you work with themselves aren't using Twitter as a way of communicating and they aren't seeing or experiencing bullying on that platform. There's still lots of uh, opportunity for discussion to be had in this tool. The second tool is one that can directly be used with children and young people, and this is Rocket Chat. So this can be used either as a, an app downloaded from the app stores and installed on a mobile device or used in a browser as well. And this allows you to set up uh, a number of users. So you can set all your, your students or the young people you're working with up as users. They can be anonymous so that their, their usernames aren't displayed to one another. They don't have to necessarily use their real names. And then you can actually use this as an online space to uh, engage in cyberbullying role play. There are activities in the educational toolkits that support this, that give you some of the, uh, the scenarios that you may wish to use and the different roles that you can assign to the young people. But then actually this provides an online space for them to be able to actually act out these scenarios and, and see what kind of language might come out, what kind of behaviors, and indeed some of the ways that this behavior might escalate as well. There has been a lot of discussion within the team about how we make this a, a safer space to be able to explore something that's clearly of a very sensitive topic. And so one of the features that has been introduced is the ability to moderate these conversations. An educator can decide if they so wish to be able to see all the conversations taking place and all the messages that go backwards and forwards between users, or they can choose to be a bit more hands off if they wish. And this was uh, introduced in part due to the fact that young people said that they they didn't feel that they'd be able to role play a cyberbullying scenario accurately or realistically if they knew that a, a teacher or an educator was watching the whole thing. 
Of course, if you're allowing young people to, to have a bit more free reign in this digital space to, to be able to explore the nature of cyberbullying, then there are things that, that could crop up that might cause problems. Yeah, people might get very upset by the experience. It might escalate and actually turn into real bullying, whereas at first it started off as a role play or other things that are unexpected might occur too. So the team at FBK have actually developed an SOS button that has been introduced into the tool that any user on the platform at any time can hit to let an educator know immediately that something's not quite right, that actually things have got out of hand or, or that the educator needs to step in and explore things further to try and keep everyone safe and keep it on the right track. So that would then be sent through to the educator via message or email. They can immediately uh, dive into the conversation and explore it and discuss it further with children and young people. So this can be a very useful tool for exploring uh, uh, different aspects of cyberbullying. There are activities in the educational toolkit that allow you to, to explore the same kind of scenarios, but in an offline capacity through role play or freeze framing or, or sort of group drama activities as well. The third tool is Creenda. Creenda is a browser based tool and it's very much, very much based on um, image sharing and comments related to image sharing that might fall into cyberbullying behavior. So we have developed a database of stock images around various themes and you can see some of those displayed on the screen here. So religion, disability, body image, um, images that depict uh, aspects of the LGBTQ plus community. And the idea is that you would then see these, a, a, an educator would have to set this up first. You set this up for your students or your learners first uh, with the type of images that you want to show them. You uh, would then get them to run it through and it, it runs through a little bit like a quiz where they would see a random selection of the images. And they would be asked whether or not they would make fun of someone if they saw them posting this on Instagram. If they choose yes, then they actually get a follow up menu where they can actually specify in a bit more detail what it is that they would make fun of and also why as well. So there's a free text box feature there too where they can actually provide additional detail. And again, this is a fantastic way of starting a discussion with young people about image based bullying online and comment based bullying that occurs on visual social media such as Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and others. And by getting the young people to run through this process and look through a selection of images and give their feedback, you can collect a set of data that you can then explore with them and talk about the type of trends that maybe you see and the type of behaviors within that too. So again, another great opportunity to, to really kickstart discussions around the nature of cyberbullying as well. The last tool is uh, again, one aimed for young people and it is browser based uh, at present, but there is also an Android version in development and this is High School Superhero. And the idea is that a young person can create their own avatar in the game. And you can see some examples on the screen here of the different features that they can customize. And then um, their avatar then enters a, a virtual high school. So the game is set in a high school and they go around and they can see various um, other characters in the game interacting so this is a single player game it's not multiplayer there are no other real players in here but there are other characters in the game that they can interact with and the idea is that the young person should go around and they have two different tasks that they can engage in in terms of trying to understand and tackle cyberbullying. The first is word replacement so they can actually go around and see conversations and things taking place in the virtual game environment and one of those could be people saying things towards a target of cyberbullying. So as you can see on the screen here, Lucas is saying the comment, you suck. And the player has the ability to go up to any of the comments that are being said towards someone in the game and actually manipulate and edit any of the words within those comments. So in the case of you suck, um, you can actually then click on the word suck and then you can actually enter an alternative word. So you can flip the negative language in their sentiments to something more positive. And of course, changing you suck to you rock completely changes the whole nature of the message as well. So it's really trying to uh, hone in on this idea of how you can use language to uh, counteract cyberbullying, but also how you can effectively use this online as well. So sometimes, where appropriate, a good way of tackling um, negative comments that a bully is making towards someone else online is actually to take their same comments, replace the negative language with very positive language and sentiments and repost it. And that can sometimes take the sting out of their attack. It can also show that you're giving support to the target of the bullying rather than focusing on the behavior of the bully themselves. The second of the two tasks in the activity is uh, graffiti erasing. So you will see various graffiti messages um, that are sort of rooted in hate speech or, or discriminatory or bullying behavior dotted around the virtual game environment. This one for some reason is on the top of a roof. 
but you can actually then go in and you can erase parts of that that message. So in the same way as editing the, uh, the the sentences and the conversations that people are having in the game, for this one you can actually edit the words to change the nature of that message as well. And again, it's an interesting one to discuss with young people to explore this idea of removing or erasing or changing the words that people use online to change the meaning and how that affects cyberbullying behavior and when you might be able to do that in a bullying incident online in a safe way and actually in some situations where maybe that isn't a safe strategy where trying to change someone's words might just inflame the situation rather than um, bring it back down to a more manageable level so high school superhero is another one that is very useful to explore the nature of cyberbullying as well so those are the educational uh, tools. They are not currently available for, for educators to try out, but they will be available later in the project. Alongside the educational to uh, tools are the educational toolkits. These are available at present on kidactions.eu and they are designed for both formal and non-formal educators. Rather than writing a separate toolkit for formal educators, i.e. teachers, and another separate toolkit for non-formal educators, the idea is that the toolkit materials can be used freely by both groups and you can select the ones that are most suitable for you as an educator, depending on your role and the young people you work with. Again, as well, the idea was also to have activities suitable for different ages. So there are activities within the toolkit that are specifically marked as being most suitable for ages 11 to 13, but also ones as most suitable for ages 14 to 19. And again, there are plenty of activities that overlap that too. And the idea is that you as an educator can go in and look at the materials and select the activities that work best for your young people, regardless of their age. Although not explicitly stated throughout the toolkit, there is this implicit idea that a number of the activities focus for young people on understanding themselves in bullying situations. How do they feel? How do they react? What is their role? There are activities that focus on their interactions with their friends and their peers and others around them, both offline and online. And then there are also a few activities in there that allow them to take their thinking to a wider level, thinking about the nature of cyberbullying in society, thinking about how they might be able to try and tackle that through um, youth activism and having a voice online and offline to try and spread messages and raise awareness around the nature of bullying and what people can do to try and tackle that together as a group or community. The activities are available in three different languages, French, English and Italian. And in total, there are 20 educational activities in the toolkits. Seven of those activities link directly to the digital tools that I have previously showed you. For some of those, um, the activity relies on you actually using the tool first. So it might be the case of actually um, collecting the data from Camot, the, uh, the monitoring tool, and then using that in the activity that you run with, with young people. For other activities linked to the digital tools, you don't actually need to necessarily use the tool first, but the activities tie into the, uh, the, the ideas and the principles behind the tools. So for example, there is a debating activity in the toolkit um, where the, the big debate question to be discussed by young people is about image sharing online and whether it's okay to be able to share any image of your choosing or actually are there certain types of images that perhaps you shouldn't share because it does put you more in a position of vulnerability where you might be bullied or you might be discriminated against or others might treat you badly. So there's a definitely a for and against to argue for that one of whether or not you should be allowed to have this freedom of expression and post whatever you like or whether there are things that you shouldn't say and do for your own protection and vice versa. The fact that people responding to and commenting on those pictures do they have a right to freedom of expression as well? And these directly link into the idea of the creamed tool that I showed you earlier, where uh, you ask young people as to whether or not they would comment or respond negatively to images that they see on Instagram. The principle of the tool is that it focuses on three key areas, understanding cyberbullying, preventing cyberbullying and responding to cyberbullying. And as you'll see in a moment, when we navigate through the tool, a number of the activities are tagged with at least one of these areas. Because of the nature of cyberbullying, it's often very hard to respond to something unless you also understand it or you consider it in preventative terms. So a number of the activities are actually tagged with more than one of these key foci. 
Alongside the three key foci of understanding, preventing and responding is the importance of social and emotional learning that underpins a lot of this as well. So you can see from the centre of this diagram from KSEL, launched in 2020, their model for social and emotional learning, there are five core skills and these skills are referenced to throughout the toolkit materials uh, where the activities offer opportunity to practice these core skills to develop understanding of social and emotional learning in different areas. These five core skills, as you can see, are self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and social awareness. And again, a number of the activities may have one or more of these uh, different core skills uh, tagged to it in some way to indicate there are opportunities to explore these. So for example, um, a number of activities may explore how cyberbullying makes you and others feel, which is very much rooted in self-awareness. But of course, in order to respond positively to that, you need to know how to manage those feelings. So self-management comes into play as well. Um, when you get to a certain point for young people, of course, it's not just about how cyberbullying makes them feel as an individual. They need to have an awareness of how other people feel and how that um, affects their behavior in a cyberbullying situation as well, which is where something like social awareness comes in too. So across the different activities, these different core skills are explored and there's lots of opportunity to, to reinforce and practice these core skills and these considerations within this model as well. In order to navigate the toolkit, as I mentioned, it's available on kidactions.eu forward slash edu toolkit. And when you get to the toolkit materials, you get a screen, as you can see on the uh, slide here, where you have all the materials popping up all in one go and then you have a number of drop down menus that you can use to navigate the materials. The first one is language and you can select from English, French and Italian. Uh, the second one is focus so that is understanding, preventing and responding. The third one is age 11 to 13 or 14 to 19 and then the final one topic is in relation to those social and emotional learning skills that I just mentioned so self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision making and so on. You can tag, you can select one or more of the options in each of those drop down menus and then the matrix of activities underneath automatically um, updates to show you the activities that include the selected features. So, for example, you might select uh, kids age 11 to 13 and then you select topic and you select responsible decision making and social awareness and it will automatically refresh all the activities to show you the ones that focus on those core skills for ages 11 to 13. You can see from the examples pictured on the screen here that actually all the materials have the tags listed underneath them. So you can actually just scroll through all the toolkit activities to see them and you can see which of the key focus areas they have, as well as uh, which social and emotional learning topics they have, as well as the age and the language as well. Clicking on any of those activities takes them through to a separate page. So every activity is um, is hosted on a separate page on the website and on that uh, page you will then see things such as the um, learning outcomes for the activity, the time required, the required resources, the key questions to guide the activity and then the activity instructions themselves as you can see pictured on the slide here at the moment. Above the instructions, you can actually download a PowerPoint presentation that contains all the materials that you need. Um, we try to ensure that any worksheets or cards or other things that may need to be printed and um, organized in advance are actually provided in those slides for you. So you can actually download the slides and then make the use of them as needed. Underneath them are the activity instructions and you can open and close these through the use of an accordion menu to view all the instructions for running the activity. And then just below those activity instructions on the page is actually a PDF download link that you can use to download the instructions to be able to print and have them offline as well. Just to run through a quick few example activities of places you may wish to start for this toolkit. The first one is an activity that relates to Rocket Chat, the um, messaging app that I described earlier. And this one is all about exploring the different roles in cyberbullying scenarios. So as you can see on the slide here from the screenshots, every uh, PowerPoint for each of the activities has those key information bits that I said uh, exist on the page. So the amount of time needed, the learning outcomes, the key vocabulary, the resources, and also key questions. These are designed to be dipped in and out of as an educator. There probably isn't time in any activity or session that you run to ask each and every one of these key questions, but you can actually use this as the basis for kickstarting a discussion if you're not quite sure where to start with young people, or dipping in and out of questions that maybe you think are most relevant to the young people that you work with as well. 
This one does require the use of Rocket Chat. So after you've set up the Rocket Chat app for use and you've made all your, your learners um, users of the chat, you can then actually issue some different scenarios. You may wish to split them into smaller groups and you can give them some different scenarios to explore as a group. And you can also, if you so wish, give them a different role within that scenario. So it could be that they are the bully, it could be that they are the person being targeted, it could be they are someone on the sidelines who's either watching and not engaging at all as a bystander, or someone who's actually stepping in and trying to deal with it as an upstander. But also those people that might sit on the sidelines and actually support the bully themselves, those cheerleaders or those admirers or followers. You can also throw some unpredictable elements into the scenario if you so wish. People like a stirrer, so that's that kind of person who always knows the exact wrong thing to say at precisely the wrong time in order to make things a whole lot worse. If you want to add another unpredictable element, you could throw in a joker, someone who just makes light of everything, makes fun of everything. It's hard to know what they truly think or feel, whether it's on the side of the bully or on the side of the target. So this is an activity that can be run through the, uh, the Rocket Chat app. What's really important to do at the conclusion of that activity, though, is to take time to run a debrief session with the young people you work with, because cyberbullying can be a very sensitive thing to talk about, but indeed to, to role play and to get to experience as well. It's really important to take the time to talk to them about how they feel about it, how they feel the role play went, if things got out of hand, if things uh, went differently to the way that maybe they'd expect it to occur in real life. Asking people to role play something doesn't always result in something that's as realistic as, as the real thing for, for obvious reasons. So it's good to discuss all of those different things, but also talk about the actions that they took and if they if they had done it again, would they have taken different actions accordingly? But it's absolutely crucial to run this session because the last thing that you want is for any of the young people that you work with to leave this session feeling worse than when they started. That's not the intention at all. We want to help them understand cyberbullying. We want them to develop strategies to prevent it, but also to respond to it as well. And the only way we can do that is to make sure that they have largely positive experiences around this. So making sure that the young people haven't been negatively affected by what was a role play scenario is absolutely crucial. So that having that debrief is a valuable chance to make sure that you've picked up on that and that you can follow up any concerns that you might have about any young people's well-being. The second activity is using tools to spot cyberbullying. So this links uh, with the Camot tool that I mentioned earlier. And this is uh, a tool, where, uh, sorry, an activity where we ask young people to consider what kind of signs you can pick up on that someone is being a bully online. How would you be able to spot that? Um, it could be textual uh, clues. So it could be the words they use, the language they use, the way they write things. It could be visual clues in terms of emojis and GIFs and memes and uh, and pictures and videos. It could be uh, auditory things. So it could be um, sort of voicemail messages or audio chat or other kind of things like that. But then also behavioral traits as well. Someone who just spams the message messaging um, in an online gaming forum constantly over and over and over as a kind of bullying be repetitive behavior. So you get young people to consider these different aspects of how bullying might appear on different social media platforms or gaming platforms or others. And then actually you get them to consider what could you do to develop a tool that would spot that kind of bullying behavior. And then they have a worksheet that they can actually dive into and work in individually or in groups to just sort of map out this idea for a cyberbullying detector tool for social media. What kind of bu bullying behavior is it going to spot? How is it going to learn these things? How is it going to decide whether or not it is bullying or it isn't bullying? But also really importantly, what is it going to do once it's spotted it? Is it going to send a warning to the person showing that behavior? Is it going to send a message of support to the person that can identify being targeted? Is it going to flag it up to a moderator on the platform to look at it as a human being to make a decision on it? So it's a great opportunity for, for young people to explore how technology could actually support spotting and dealing with cyberbullying behavior on social media and other platforms, but also recognizing some of the limitations that technology has in, in being able to do this and how the importance of humans, such as moderators and others, in, in making decisions around this behavior is absolutely crucial as well. Activity three is all about this concept of your best self. So your best self is the how you would behave in a situation if you wanted to achieve the best possible outcome. So this is an activity where young people can really look inward into who they are as a person, what makes them them, their, their traits, their personality aspects, their hobbies, their interests, but then to consider what would their best online self actually look like? What kind of things would they do? 
what kind of things would they not do? How would they react to different situations? And the idea of this one is they get a, a sheet that's titled My Best Online Self, as you can see from the slides. It is a blank one, so they can actually draw a, a picture of themselves, and then they can actually label it with the things that their best self would do online. Things such as thinking before they speak, uh, reaching out to others to ask for, but, but also offer support. Knowing when to walk away from situations as well. Um, a key trait with many bullies online and offline is that they want to get a reaction, either anger or upset. And sometimes the best way of dealing with that is to actually distance yourself from that situation for a while before coming back in with a, a slightly different strategy rather than just responding in the heat of the moment when you're angry or upset and you're going to give them what they want so they carry on and you're potentially going to make the situation worse. So knowing when to walk away online and offline is an important trait as well. And then the idea is that they actually take this best online self and they apply it to some different situations, such as if they saw their best friend being bullied online, if they were being bullied online, if someone was really riling them up and upsetting them and they were tempted to bully someone else online, what would their best self do in that situation? This activity also aligns with another activity um, called take a meta moment. Of course, in the heat of the moment, if you're feeling really angry or upset about something or worried about it, it's hard to be your best online self. So you need to learn strategies to, to regulate your emotions in order to then go back into a situation in the right kind of way and display the right kind of behaviors and make the right kind of choices to try and improve that situation. So this activity links nicely with another activity about a meta moment, how you take that pause or that step back from what's happening online, what you can do to regulate your emotions so that you can be that best online self when you come back to that situation. A moment later, an hour later, possibly even days later. Online, it, it, sometimes the concept of time uh, gets distorted in different ways. Activity four is all about success, successful campaigns. So this is an example of that more community, societal-based approach that I mentioned earlier. So this one is a great opportunity for young people to look at campaigns that have been out there, online or offline, that have been successful, that have got their message through, that have prompted positive behaviour change. Throughout the course of the coronavirus pandemic in many countries, there were lots of different campaigns that had to be issued by governments and public health authorities to try and keep people safe, to try and get people to display positive behaviours, to look after themselves and others, to restrict the spread of the virus. So there is hopefully lots and lots of materials out there that young people may already be familiar with of campaigns that had um, very good strap lines or very memorable um, slogans or ideas that actually prompted behavior change. And the idea is that they can actually go away and do some research and explore the facets of what makes a successful campaign, what makes these things successful in being able to change public opinion or public behavior or views around something. And then they can kind of drill down into what those elements are, extract those elements and then consider, right, if I wanted to run a campaign in my local community, on an online gaming group or platform about cyberbullying and about tackling cyberbullying or preventing it or responding to it positively, what would my campaign look like? What would it do? What would its strapline or key message be? How would I encourage people to, to make positive behavior changes? So it's a great opportunity for young people to look a little bit further than their peer groups or their school or their local community and think more widely online about how they might be able to tackle cyberbullying in a positive way. In the supporting guidance that I will show you in a couple of moments, there are suggested pathways for educators for working through these toolkit materials. Like all good toolkits, you can dip in and out of this however you see fit. You can select the activities that are most suitable for the young people you work with. But if you're not quite sure where to start or if you've got a particular focus in mind, but you're not sure how to explore that, then there are some suggested pathways to help you through the process. Um, all of the pathways contain five activities that have been selected to help take your learners on a journey through that particular focus. The one that you can see on the screen here is all about understanding the nature of cyberbullying. Regardless of the pathway that you select or where you start in the toolkit, it is highly recommended to always start with the first activity, U1, defining cyberbullying. And this is because in the group of young people that you work with, and indeed in your own mind as well, there may be a number of different definitions of cyberbullying. Part of our work in the Kid Actions project of researching um, cyberbullying research and other work that come before ours was that there is often not a clear cut definition of cyberbullying across different platforms, across different countries, across different academic groups. 
So it's really important to establish a, a base starting point with the young people you're working with of what bullying online actually is. And that's where defining cyberbullying is a great activity to do first because you can discuss and explore and agree on a shared definition together as a group so that as you move forward looking at these different aspects of cyberbullying, you've got this definition to rely back on so that you can, you can constantly question and talk about it as to what is bullying online and what maybe might not be considered bullying online. And sometimes it's really hard to, to distinguish between the two and there's some very fine lines. There's also a lot of crossover with things such as hate speech online um, but hate speech and cyberbullying aren't the same thing they, they share certain traits and facets but they, they aren't equivalent to each other so being able to discuss those things and help young people explore that too is really useful there are two guidance documents for educators that are really important to become familiar with before you engage with using either the digital educational tools or the educational toolkit one is guidance for educators and this gives you an overview of the toolkit as I've just done the, in the last half hour as well as those suggested pathways that I mentioned a moment ago and some other useful activities that you as an educator may wish to explore or complete before embarking on the use of the toolkit. One example activity is how you might engage with parents and carers in this process. How are you going to make them aware of the work that you're going to be carrying out with the, their young people? How are you going to help reinforce the messages that you share with young people and the learning they have with parents and carers so that they know what to do if they're worried about cyberbullying involving their children as well? The other document that's really important is a child protection guidance document. And this is all about establishing safe spaces and ground rules and the importance of creating the right environment, either in your classroom or your learning space that you use with young people so that you can explore the sensitive nature of cyberbullying in the right kind of way. Having these ground rules is absolutely key to help make sure that young people feel more comfortable to be able to open up and discuss these things, but also so that you've got clear guidance and guidelines in place for them so you can use these activities successfully. There's also some guidance in the, the document about using the digital tools safely. So because there may be the possibility of downloading some of the tools as an app to individual devices that young people own, it's important to make sure that those apps uh, get um, deleted after you've finished uh, running the activity. Um, it's also important to make sure that you take steps to actually limit the time that they may be able to engage in chat on Rocket Chat through the settings and things like that. So this technical debrief and this, this principles, these principles around using digital tools safely is important too. There's also the important fact that because you're talking about sensitive topics such as cyberbullying, young people may disclose cyberbullying incidents that are ongoing, previous historic cyberbullying incidents, also other incidents that may constitute a child protection concern. So there is guidance in there to help you consider how you're going to handle those disclosures in the right kind of way, how you can record and log details around this, but also really importantly, how you get further help and support for that young person to help them deal with whatever, whatever it is that they have disclosed. And there is a, another supporting activity in that document as well. You can see it on the slide here, and it is a template decision tree or flow chart that you can actually fill in with the own steps that you have in your own organization or the own steps that you propose to put into place for dealing with these kind of disclosures if they do arise in the activities that you run with young people. So that then you've got a clear roadmap for how you're going to deal with that disclosure, where you get help from, what steps you're going to take next, and what you want the event eventual outcome to be as well. These guidance documents are hosted on the main landing page of the toolkit but they are also hosted on each and every one of the educational toolkit activity pages as well. And they're in an orange box near the top of the page. So it's strongly advised that before you engage in any of the ed activities in the toolkit or with any of the digital educational tools, do give these documents a quick read through, make sure you're familiar with them, make sure you adopt the principles that you find useful in this, and you'll find that they will definitely make a difference in the success of running the activities around what can be a very difficult topic, such as cyberbullying. So that's a very short summary of the materials. I do strongly urge you to go and explore them yourself. That's the best way of becoming familiar with them and working out what might work with the young people that you work with. Um, if you do have any questions about the materials, then please do feel free to contact me. My email address is listed on the screen here, gareth.court at eun.org. We do hope that you make good use of the tools and that you can have lots of successful discussions to help young people understand, prevent and respond to cyberbullying as part of the Kid Actions Project. Thank you for taking the time to watch this webinar and please do feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you.